Hey, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Precision Farming Dealer Podcast brought to you by Ag Express Electronics. My name is Noah Newman. This week, contributing editor Dan Crummett goes one-on-one with Carbon Robotics founder and CEO Paul Mikesell for a deep dive into the company's laser weeder technology and what it means for the future of weed control. Dan, take it away. We're here this morning with uh, Paul Mikesell with uh, Carbon Robotics. Uh, they are the maker of the laser weeder, and we have discussed that machine some in the press and at least with Lesseter um, in some of the publications we've done there. But, Paul, if you would just kind of recap what the machine is like, what it does, and then um, let's get into some of the economics that, uh, that this might uh, pretend for growers uh, in the future and some of sure, the problems you bet. they're facing. Yeah, you bet. Um, the machine, the laser weeder, um, well, it kind of kind of does what it sounds like. So we use uh, cameras and computer vision systems on computers to look at the uh, field and in in uh, vegetable and specialty crops and uh, find weeds. And then we use high powered lasers uh, to target those weeds and burn them out. And uh, this technology is shipping as a um, a pull behind implement that connects up to any of your tractors. Um, it's a twenty foot wide um, machine, so on if you're doing eighty inches, that'll be three rows, and it's configurable um, for row spacing from sixty inches all the way up to eighty four inches. And uh, the machine, there's lots of videos of it on the uh, in, on the internet in uh, Instagram and Twitter and YouTube etc and we try to put more stuff up every day but the uh, machines have been operating um, for quite some time we've been de- deploying this technology for about three years now the final production version has been shipping since earlier this year earlier in 2022 and um, we're continuing to bring on new uh, machines and ship them primarily to us for the remainder of 2023 although the, we have, we do have some machines going to canada and then we'll probably start doing some international in 2024 okay. yeah the ability just to uh, pull this uh with relatively small horsepower requirements uh makes it very handy is this something that can be uh, uh pulled in other operations uh, as um, a tandem has a tandem function yeah so you're saying does the machine do more than just weed control is that your question no no can it be pulled uh you know behind uh, uh other implements or something the way that it works is that the machine pulls its power from the tractor pto and okay. so we're consuming um most of the horsepower of the tractor's capability when we're doing that Okay. So it's usually a single tractor, you know, tractor and machine combo um, that are pretty mated together throughout the throughout the okay. season. Okay. Um, and uh, the machine is meant to be, you know, easily disconnected and moved around, etc. But usually, people keep tractors connected to them, you know, twenty four seven, and are pulling these through the field. Okay. Most of their most of their uh, planting season because right? they've got acres to weed somewhere yeah um yeah so and i think i think i'm sure we've touched on this before but you know the the benefits of the technology are you don't need you don't need to get labor out into the field to pull weeds uh you don't need to use herbicides which are getting more expensive and harder to come by and less effective every year um you don't have to uh and it's got the machine's got so much precision we can get up within a millimeter of a of the plant and so uh, we'll 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 kill out all of the weeds without you having to worry about you know trying to run a blade through it or something like that that's going to only be partially effective yeah uh one just brief touch here on the economics of the machine itself uh yeah. how does it compare as far as uh you know an roi uh for a machine like this uh, with cost savings that uh, obviously would come from lack of herbicide purchases and so forth mm-hmm. yeah we like to see a one and a half to three year roi for farmers and so that's the that's our target 
some folks have shown as much as a one year ROI. Um, but I think it's more realistic to expect a one and a half to three year ROI. So what that means is the the money you save on your weed control per season, if you multiply that into the cost of a of a laser weeder, you find that the machine pays for itself within within three years. And that's what we've been able to demonstrate, and that's our continued goal. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, things that are driving growers to look at this, uh, you know, obviously the cost of herbicides and the environmental ramifications and such like that. Sure. But, uh, 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 the current labor shortage. Uh, yeah. Discuss a little bit about how that can help and, and yeah. maybe anecdotes and that sort of thing that you know of that uh, that would illustrate this. Yeah, you know, the biggest issue for most growers today, I think, is labor and access to labor. Yeah. That seems to be the that seems to be the number one driving force. And so knowing that you have a laser weeder that can get in there and kill kill the weeds and you know it doesn't worry about how much wind is blowing or you know what there's no there's no there's no field input. So you don't have to worry about any any downstream drift or anything like that. Um but really just it's the labor aspect that's been I think the number one thing that farmers are having to deal with that the machine will obviate the need for and um I, I think we all know you know that the labor markets are are pretty bad for farming we've got minimum wage increases continuously we've got changes in overtime laws which are um getting which are different every year you know the challenges at the border are getting getting folks folks over that are needed for doing stuff in the field and so you know the last thing i think you want to do is take your take your crew and put them out in the field and have them, have them pulling weeds. Um, it's a real kind of waste of, of abilities and, uh, and just sort of time. And so getting a, getting a machine out there to take care of it is, has been, I think the number one savings for folks is just not having to get labor out there. Okay. Um, you know, the herbicides are, they have all the environmental impacts that you're, that you're talking about. They're also, We've seen the rise in herbicide resistance in the weed weed population. There's been a lot of studies about this, but the, the herbicides are getting less effective every year. They uh, tend to knock your crops back. Um, every time you spray, it sets your field back a little bit. Um, the um, uh, uh, We have lots of examples of herbicide spray um, crops compared to laser weeded crops, and the, the laser weeded crops will come up come up earlier and just generally be happier. And, and, uh, you know, and if you're worried about your health effects and exposure to these chemicals and what happens downstream, if there's a, you know, people, people have a lot of issues with scheduling when they're going to spray based on what the, uh, what the local environment is like, if there's a school downstream or there's, you know, um, housing that you got to worry about, there's, you need to have a buffer around your spray area, around your fields and make sure that you get all, all proper sign-offs and agreements to be able to spray in those kind of areas. And I think having something like the laser weeder is nice because you don't have to worry about any of those effects. Again, there's, there's no, there's no field inputs. There's no crop input. So what all we're doing is deploying heat energy to burn up weeds. So it's, it's really that kind of balance between how much labor do I have? What's my complexity around spraying chemicals? What's it going to do to my crops? You know, all of that stuff is really going into this, into the decision around when and how to deploy a laser weeder. And I think all that stuff is kind of why we've been taken off so well. Um, and over time, cost of technology over, only gets lower, cost of labor only goes higher. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the environment that, we, that we're walking into. Well, you mentioned uh, some business success there with how yeah. you're taking off and such. Can you give us yeah. some idea of maybe number of units and where they are uh, currently? Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, we you have see as far as growth. We have um, we have contracts for delivery from over fifty farms. Um, we've not deployed that many yet. We're gonna we're gonna do um, the rest of those next year. Um, the folks, I think some of the best examples we've seen are reduction in weed control bills by eighty percent. That eighty percent number came out from a couple of different growers and that's kind of how we got how we got that number um 
And the machines are deployed in primarily West Coast US right now. Um, largely that's based on where we're where we've been building um, and where all of our support bases are at. A lot of a lot of stuff in California, Washington, um, some uh, New Mexico, Arizona. Next year we'll be bringing on folks in Idaho, Oregon, Colorado. Um, there's some Canada deliveries going out next year. And then we are starting to work our way into uh, the East Coast. Um, what so are some currently, of the crops that, that are being uh, treated this yeah. way? Yeah, it's all specialty and veg. So we're focused on, on things like onions, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, lettuces, leafy greens, you know, spinaches, cucumbers, leeks, garlic, um, so, some of everything. Everything that you eat directly out of the vegetable an herb aisle in your grocery store. Those are our crops. Thanks, guys. Let's burn a quick time out and share a message from our sponsor, Ag Express. Dealers, farmers, and those in ag know the importance of getting the most from their efforts. Technology has been a significant game changer when it works. When it doesn't, turn to the experts at Ag Express Electronics, who find a way by specializing in the timely repair, support, sales, and engineering of ag technology. Ag Express provides component level repairs to save time and money on costly replacements. Whether planting, harvesting, chemical application, or hay baling, Ag Express has a solution for nearly any operation. You can feel confident doing business with Ag Express Electronics because of their excellent reputation, track record for quality work, and commitment to technology. The company is 100% certified, employee owned, and celebrating over 30 years of providing possibilities. Visit www.agexpress.com or call one of our service locations today for ways that Ag Express can provide possibilities for your business. Now back to the conversation. How far a leap is it technologically and business-wise uh, to get into broad acre row crops? You know, the broad acre row crops are kind of, this has not been a focus of ours. Um, part of it is because, you know, corn, Corn, wheat, and soy generally is processed pretty heavily before anybody gets a hold of it. Um, the majority of the corn in this in this country, subsidized by the Farm Bill, of course, um, the majority of that corn winds up going to silage for feed or um, high fructose corn syrup, corn-based ethanol, these kinds of heavily processed environments. So the value of the crops is relatively low. There's a lot of good, you know, GMO-based herbicide resistant strains so they have selective herbicides it's not been a great place for us to focus really we we spend most of our time in areas where people care about the quality nutrient content taste you know flavor structure of what they're getting and that's where um what they're getting what they're producing and so that's where laser weeder does its best Got it. well what about the the obviously you have uh, farmer buy-in and you have yeah. customers and, and a growing list of customers. What's your feeling or, or your company's feeling uh, about the farmer openness to this technology? Uh, yeah. And from there, what might you have coming down the pipeline using similar technology for other things? Farmers are incredibly innovative and open to technological solutions that will help as long as there's a good cost ROI, as long as there's a good payback period. So, you know, there's this old trope about, about farmers not understanding technology and not wanting to deal with any newfangled stuff, but I, I haven't found that to be true at all. Yeah. These folks, it, it, It's a favorite stereotype. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. I think it comes out of ignorance and not understanding and, and whatever, but um, you know, why is there, look at how much innovation is going on in ag tech. You can go to most of the farms that are doing, that are, you know, that are, that are producing the food you eat and they're using some of the latest technology in things like computer vision, in our case, laser technology, um, GPS guidance, right? Self-driving tractors, all of this stuff. You know, where else do you see that? Right. So, um, what other environment are there machines going around doing automated work um, to tackle these kinds of industrial uh, industrial scale problems? You know, so where else? I mean, I don't know, Amazon, right? Um, warehouses, that kind of thing. Um, but in your daily life, you don't you don't see that. 
So farmers are really dealing with some of the most advanced technology. And I think that that has happened in a way where pe- folks just generally who aren't part of the farming communities have not, did not understand it. And it's happened quick. I think it's happened in the last 10 years that farmers and growers have really become some of the most innovative technology deployment areas, um, certainly in our Western economies. And I think a lot of people in the tech world didn't realize it and don't see it coming. A lot of that's because it's geographically separated um, in a lot of these places. You know, you look at California, it's a good example. We've got San Francisco, LA on the West Coast, and then the East Coast, uh, or the East, not even on the East Coast, but sort of in between, right? You've got Salinas, you've got Fresno, you've got Central Valley, Imperial Valley, right? Um, these are all areas that are far farther away from the big city, right? They're quite a distance from San Francisco and, and LA. And those are the areas where all this all the press is. So I think there's been a lot missed. Um, we have the same scenario up here in Washington, right? We have Seattle on the West Coast, and then we have the whole east side of Washington is is farming and farm communities. Right. Um, but you know, the major newspapers are primarily on the West Coast. And so I, I think that there's been a lot of uh, isolation in terms of what the press generally and more general, like more specifically, I should say the tech press, the technology press has missed this innovation that's happened in the growing growing communities. Um, and I think it's time for that to change. It will ultimately. Mm-hmm. Uh, The technology itself, uh, right now we're killing weeds. We have uh, rapidly turning turrets that have lasers uh, based on artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, if you will, that sort of thing. What other avenues are you looking at down the road? Oh, yeah, you would you would you know what you would ask that as part of the sort of second half of your last question. I forgot Mm -hmm. to address it. Apologize about that. Um, I'll tell you. That's why we've been. We've been we've been working on technology now with the same system for for thinning. Um, so more general. So I'll just I'll just describe the problem here. When seed is, is relatively cheap and and crops have a good price at the market, um, um, which has been the situation for you know for quite some time, decades. Um, what a lot of farmers will want to do is overplant, overseed the field so that they get good stand count. So they get good germ in all the areas where they might want to have crop, where the soil will support it and the nutrients will support it because not all the seeds will germinate. But what that means is if you're overseeding, it means that if in certain areas you'll have too many of those, too many of those seeds germinate, too much of your crops coming up and they will crowd each other. So thinning is a process in combination with uh, overseeding. Thinning is a process where you'll go in and kill some of those plants that are germinating, but would cause space constraints. And that has been typically done today with either hand labor or or some form of herbicide spray, um, which has the same issues, cost, effectiveness, drift problems. Um, In certain areas of the country, there's limits to the amount of Nitrogen inputs you can add, and these herbicides will all have some amount of that. So, so thinning with the laser weeder turns out to be a really good fit because we already can tell what's happening on the ground. We already have lasers to kill vegetable matter, kill plant matter. And so we had to upgrade our computer vision a little bit to be able to detect not just the weeds, but the crops and the configuration of the crops and how close they are to each other. So that we can do optimal spacing through a thinning pass. Um, so we're in the Would this be of, done with the laser weeder itself or another machine? Done with the laser weeder itself. So while okay. you're going along killing weeds, you can turn on the thinning function and we'll we'll thin okay. for it. So that's in development right now. It's been tested um, for a little bit. We're in the middle of sort of finishing that up. Um, moving down the road a bit, you know, we, so we have images on, and, and, uh, detections on all the weeds and all the crops in the field. And so we are working on some, uh, analytics information prediction software. So, uh, growers who are, who are customers can log into a web portal and see the heat maps about weed density, um, stand count prediction, that kind of thing. So there's some information, 
um, and hopefully insight that we can pull out from that to, to help folks. So that's on the software side. And then we will be continuing to experiment with other types of machinery and robotics in agriculture generally. And there's a couple of things in the works right now that we're experimenting with. Well, very good. I appreciate your time and yeah. uh, visiting uh, with Paul Michael founder and uh, CEO of uh, Carbon Robotics in Seattle. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate you it. Bet. Nice to talk to you. Thanks, guys. And that'll wrap things up for this week's edition of the Precision Farming Dealer Podcast. Thanks to our sponsor, Ag Express Electronics, for making the episode possible. Thanks to you for tuning in. And until next time, for all things Precision Farming Dealer related, head to precisionfarmingdealer.com. I'm Noah Newman. Have a great day.